Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Tino, the last days of, some would say, Europe. But right now, morning thoughts for much of his near 60 years of life. President Barry Goldwater had maintained one routine without ever skipping a day. At around 6 in the morning, he would wake up, oh my goodness, make for the kitchen and prepare himself a nice cup of coffee. Yum! Larger, more staffed, and more stocked his new DC abode may be, but the ingredients and proportions in use hadn't changed from a shack in Paradise Valley. There is Zonin's a recipe of choice was simple. Two sugar, one cream, no milk, five ounces of water, just enough to keep the slightly sweet taste potent. He wouldn't trade it for any other mix in the world. If someone else prefers a coffee with more or less sugar and creamer, then that was fine too. Any self-respecting man would tailor the coffee to their own unique tastes, instead of letting someone else decide the flavor for them. Barry smiled to himself. It seemed fitting that centuries-old, future-proof wisdoms can be gleaned through the simple act of preparing Earth's black blood. But what did it say when half the country still acted as if they only drank instant coffee their whole lives? That wouldn't do at all. As he stirred his mug with a teaspoon, Barry thought of the future. The country has no shortage of troublemakers who'd love nothing more than to herd the American people along like unthinking sheep. Streets from the flock, dreaming of the freedoms they deserve, would be brought back by gentle-looking hands to await the inevitable slaughter. Plenty of those in New York, Chicago, San Fran, banners red like the blood of lambs. In his weaker moments, the desire to fight evil with a lesser evil grows strong, but it was far too early to make such a drastic decision. America's new president took his first sip for the morning. He promised every American would have the chance to brew their own coffee. Can't do that without starting the day right, now can he? Some now, some day, some way. Cool. And we will do America's No Place for Radicals, which we'll do this after the Senate elections. Right now, I'm just really just waiting until the Senate elections are done to see how, many, how much support we can get. But, so, overall, like, you guys gave me um, a lot of comments and recommendations, whether we should do limited conscription versus lessons from the South African War. And overall, you guys chose lessons from the South African War. <clears throat> Even though we, I don't remember I've read this one, so, but we're going to read this one first and then do that one. Like a demon from scripture, a trade unionism casts its blood crimson shadow over the good men and women of America. The sharp edges of its manifold jagged teeth glimmer as daggers against pale moonlight, ready to sink deep into the fair Columbia's unsuspecting flesh and veins, and we love the flesh here. What sort of beast must it be that it can bear its terrible implements with little and either recognition or repercussion from America's god-fearing folk? Unfortunately, this red tainted beast is not as invulnerable as it is terrifying. The American people united can be fashioned into a sword that strikes true at its heart, made sharper with whetstones of knowledge. President Goldwater plans to seek out notable actors to fashion such whetstones with their wit and charisma, and as if by providence command, one promising Ronald Reagan has immediately answered his call. It occurs to for any forward-thinking man of war or the world that one can only wage war successfully as he knows the grounds where he wages it. It's about time we took measures from the playbook of the local guerrilla fighters and integrated them into our own combat doctrines. As their allies, they should be more than willing to aid the force superior in strength to them on their side. That might well only supplement their own so much if it is left to languish confused as it is consistently outwitted by a far more locally and acclimated enemy. Spotting unique styles of booby trap, learning what to listen for in the underbrush, and understanding ambush positions in the foliage before they can be sprung among other things will all work towards our boys' favor. And the 72 Republican Democratic primaries. Delegates from all over the U.S. arrived at Miami Beach, Florida, and the convention center there to inaugurate Barry Goldwater as the RD candidate for president. And now, after four years in the White House, it's time for another presidential election, so the whole country can determine if the incumbent deserves another term or if it's time for a change, of course. The primaries for the RDs are sure and sweet this year, as only one candidate emerged to challenge El Presidente, South Dakota Senator George McGovern. However, like usual in American politics, it's next to impossible to beat an incumbent president in the convention, and McGovern's long-shot attempt quickly fell flat, turning the RD convention into a coronation for Barry Goldwater. Promising another term of prosperity and success, the president focuses sides on the National Progressive Party, readying his party to take them on four whole more years. Let's go, everybody. Let's go all the way with BMG. Hey, we can suppress a far right. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Because they're going to be a special group. And they are a special group. They are a very special group. I just want to increase the GDP, man. Is that all? That's all I want to do. That's all. That's all I really want to do. And cut down military austerity. Because right now, with 1,200 PP, you know what? I'm gonna risk this. Let's cut that down. So from minus 18.8 billion, we jump down. That's pretty good. 34 billion. Holy crap! That's a, that's a, that's a lot. Not gonna lie. But lessons from South Africa. <coughs> Well-trained men need good guns, of course, too, but. The firepower needed to raise the fascists from their jungle roosts have proven to be greater than ever imagined. More of the, the defense budget will be repurposed towards the manufacture of only the of the finest quality of mass issue small arms, and new designs betting us jungle soldiers war considered for service. Flame based and explosive projectile weapons capable of being fielded by small companies, platoons, and squads will also enter development and selection to enable their progress through the sweltering venture or vendor vendor. Populated with Nazis, there are a few few things that can overpower a vile jackboot, but a preponderance of arsenal in the hands of hardy GIs is among them. 
And Among Us, too. Nice. Oh, good. Look at all that stuff. Um, I'm just waiting for get more political power down here. We should be okay. We can do that one because we can, because why not? Thank you. Good, good, good. Get some research done because we can. Uh, attack helicopters, which I've used before in like, my German campaigns. They're actually really, they can be really strong. If you throw them on your divisions too, that's just super nice. But after that one, it is August, so more men, more munitions. Mm, not just supply consumption. We get infantry equipment. What do we want? Specialized demands, better vehicles, land, air, integration. So we can't do this one, which kind of sucks, but it's all right. Mili military Kenyanism. Kenyan. Kenyanism. I never know how to say that K word. I never know. Please let me know in the comments below how to pronounce that, because I always say it wrong. So I'll do this one first. Why not? Is it keys or key knees? Keys have been may have been a fool in most respects, but at least he's grasped the needs of wartime production and the benefits of coffers for the larger market economy. The debt we owe to our coffers is negligible against the backdrop of the ferocious clash through the bo bottommost ranges of Africa. The prospective boom from cycle against war ranges rad. Ravages of war, with raw production is tempting to say the least, too. Reaganist financial doctrines shift to reflect a Keynesian demand focused military industri industrial policy that the administration is convinced it can give the desired push that will collapse the enemy's resolve through sheer brute war production overclocking. The war has, ha has to be fought, and political economy cannot stand in the way. East Coast? Let's go East Coast. Oh, look at that. 62.01. Billion. Never enough, but we will be naming a rifle very, very soon as well. It is September, which is fine. Oh, we can't do one. Oh, do this one first. Oh. Oh, okay, my bad. More men, more munitions. Okay. Oh, so we have to do this one first. This one's the first. It's an imperishable fact of armed struggle that you never know the lengths to which your dedication and nation may be tried. The manufacturing foundries which fuel the conflict's success must be tried yet further with an increase in locales. Loans and assembly lines to get more guns, gear, or vehicles, and shells to the latest wave of valiant young Americans to stomp their arcade's guts out. Regarding those courageous youth, there simply are not enough of them in the service to deploy against the Reich's sides. Conscription will be accelerated to meet the call of duty against the unrelenting Nazi specter. No man can fight forever, which is why fresh faces with fresh reserves of combat vigor must sally forth to crush a fascist head on. With their well-oiled tools, this they will end this. For as Goldwater knows, you don't start a fight, you have no intention of finishing. Naming a rifle. Hey, Snowflake, what's the German for white? Private Whitley sighed from his seat behind the guard post. He didn't need to pry his eyes off Dostoevsky to recognize the voice, or entertain it for that matter. What is it this time, Ansel? The now-named Corporal Ansel lugged with him a sniper rifle, one of the brand-new M14s with a scope. Rumnant. Rumnant said Rock Island was pumping out like candy as he approached. Just thinking of a cool sounding name for this year gold is gift. He caressed its varnish, slightly pale white stock with a man caresses or like a man caresses his afterglow lover in bed. Angry Beauty never missed a dime in five hundred yards. Now Ansel singing Goldwater's praises was a genuine surprise. Goldie's gift? What Whitley snorted. Coming from a diehard writer like you? His friend held up two fingers. One, I vote for any for anyone without an R or D next to their name. And he brought down one digit. Two, anyone who gives me a factory fresh gun is my vote. It's that simple, really. The corporal finished, shrugging. I'll be sure to tell my sister you've finally seen the light. She deserves some good news outside their dysfunctional manner every now and then. As Axel started nonplus. Don't even start joke about that one, Snoot. No picking at her brother's scabs. It's a sh... It's sh... Anyways, he waved off. You're the only one who can speak Nazi in a 12-mile radius, so tell me what they call the uh, color white. After jogging years of disuse off his mind, Whitley managed a hesitant translation. Vice, huh? Fantastic. Vice. Vice, vice, vice. And then we'll do this one, because I didn't realize we need to do either one of these. Specialized stuff is not bad, but... I don't like losing uh, reliability, but you do get more speed and heart attack for some stuff. So the best defense is well-funded military. Which is okay. I'm just, Like I said, I'm just waiting for the elections to go through, because we're going to be having a good old time with what we're about to do. Please, just boost it up, please. <clears throat> no debt, no problems. And also, if you take a look here, we're now at five and a half, and then... Oh, we're still at five and a half. But we will be able to get... The Godfather releases, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Um, 10 to 15% poverty. Slightly better than where we're at right now. Actually, we lose some research speed. Look at that. We lose some monthly population as well. Huh. Okay. Well, I get 20% more income factor rate. And 10% more ta uh, taxable population factor. So, nice. Very nice. And after this one is done, um, honestly, we should be able to do another one of these. So, we could do all this stuff. Actually, let's take a look here. So, focus on the socialists. Careful with their rhetoric. Infiltrate the leftists of the NPP. A media firestorm. Isolate more communist traitors. Conservatives reign supreme, which looks very good. Target the Yaquis. Fi fi they're just nothing but fascists, really. Words that kill. Dig up evidence. Crack down on fascists. Continue to isolate more fascist traitors. Create watch list. So, America's no place for radicals. Because I do want to save this one. This side for the very 
not for the very last, but generally for the last piece. Oh, actually, we need three pieces of evidence against these guys, huh? Hmm. <clears throat> but we can work on that as time goes on. America's no place for radicals. Despite the RD's best efforts, the extremist wings of the NPP have been gaining popularity over the past and last few years. If we wish to keep our nation safe from these radicals, we must fight fire with fire. President Goldwater is ordered for another round of investigation on the MPP. The government will use every method we have against them, and we will bring them down, destroy their reputation, and lift those misguided fools who have fallen for the siren song of communism or fascism back to the light of democracy. Some of these methods may not be legal. Some of them, these methods may not be moral. In the end, however, it will all be worth it. If American democracy is not protected in these traders within an election, it will spell the doom of our nation. Some advisors say that we're walking in the same steps as Nixon did on his road to impeachment. These cowards seem to think that we will commit the same mistakes as he did. No doubt they would hand over the White House to Yaki and his gang. Goldwater knows what he's doing, and he'll keep the tightest lid on any of the more shady parts of this operation. After all, perhaps Nixon had some good ideas when it came to <clears throat> suppression. And you know, if you know this channel, we love suppression. East Coast? Uh, East Coast again would be great, but whatever. Uh, great Plains, maybe. Let's try East Coast or Great Plains. Boom. The War Against Union. So... We need pieces of evidence against them. Operations costing us 10 million per year, which is fine. Uh, influence of the AFL needs to be weakened. Sacrifice evidence and the program. No, no, no. Confuse the unions. It'll be shadier. Moderately raise the maximum potential risk progress. Tighten loose ends. Lower monthly risk progress at the cost of lower maximum risk potential. The media offensive. We need more evidence. Now, I'll be honest, like, I don't know if this is bugged or not. This might be bugged. It might be. It might not be. I really don't know. So in the end, no matter what, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do everything as clean as possible, but if it just goofs up or something. I'll make sure we'll do okay and at least get the event. Uh, raises the amount of progress needed before we get caught. Yeah. 20 million per year? That's fine with us. Risk progress monthly gain is influenced by amount of shady measures. Zero and AFL influence. Minor? Could be minor. It's fun by funding and progress. Um, end the program. So, time loose ends. Lower maximum risk. Lower monthly risk progress. For the cost of lower maximum risk. Uh. Increase more funding. So raise the amount of money before we get caught. Bulls are updated. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So we'll see what happens. We have debt. Oh no, not debt. No. Oh, the massacre. That's not good. Some comments though included. Someone says, Goldwater is a Jew, so go against Yaki. Another person said, though, socialism is also not very super prominent in this timeline, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, socialism, I mean, you have it in Russia, and you might have it in Vietnam right now, but, like, Democrat Republic of Vietnam, but, like, Trong Chin. All right, so yeah, there's not really a lot of socialist nations in the world, so we'll see. <clears throat> America's no place for radicals. We will find you. We'll grow a little more divided. That's all right. We'll, we'll try to increase the unity here. Now, we could expand the reach of the EPA, which might not be bad, but actually, let's look here. Radicals, uh, tariffs abolished, which are nice. Um, Rationing, reintroduce the gold standard is really, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. What else do we have here? Goldwater's prosperous economy. We don't make deals with fascists. Unbreak, wow, unbreakable unity. I don't, that's, I almost, I don't think I normally get that one, but that's, that's pretty awesome. What else do we have? Clean Water Act. We have austerity and finance, abundance and defense. A green future. So I'm just, a new dawn as well. Uh, Italy, no offense, Milanesianism, Kenyanism, more men, more munitions, so we'll see. We'll definitely see what happens. 72, yes it is, thank you. <clears throat> oh boy, oh boy, now let's see what if, what's happened. Actually, we'll take a look in just a little bit. Alright, <clears throat> if you want to get that, please go right ahead. President Goldwater's one, which honestly wasn't very, uh, I was pretty much expecting that, to be honest. Alright, so let's take a look here. Ho look at all the RDs. The RD took literally every single state. We had roughly, or almost, for every voter, there's two vote out of every three people, two people voted uh, for the RDs. For every three people, two people voted for the RDs, one person voted for the MPP. This was a drastic defeat for the MPP. The Republican Party lost to the Democrat Party. The center held on to some of their places. Holy crap. Center lost to the Democrat. Every, we... I, I, I did not use consequence for this one. Oh, we got another eight s senators for the Democratic Party. Holy crap. Look at that. 56%. This is kind of broken, man. 66 Democrat senators. 66. 22 Republicans, 5 far right. The left doesn't even exist. And the center just... It, it's time to do some good stuff. It, it's, it's just time. 
Holy crap. Infiltrate? Should we be discovered? The consequences will be more severe. Is that bad? Oh, our risk of progress is 15 out of 55. Should our progress exceed our maximum? Actually, we will be revealed. Um, confuse these. Shadier. What happens if I click on that one? So it's one. How bad is that? <coughs> Infiltrate will be more severe. I'll do it once. Why not? 65. That's not that bad. 40 million. That's fine. Whatever. All right. So, sh shady measures. One morning when Reagan was exchanging barbs with Federal Reserve in the Treasury Building, McNamara was crunching his numbers in the Pentagon with a mate. And Rockefeller was calling longtime Republican donors in some fancy restaurant in downtown D.C. Director, Ho Director Hoover made his appearance in the Oval Office with a modest proposal tucked in his underarm. Washington's own king may go straight forward enough. If President Goldwater required the FBI's help in uncovering compromising information about America's extremists, then he only need to ask. And better times, the Director's office would merit a warning shop for its sheer unconstitutionality. On the other hand, It'd be sure nice to see the country's miscreants behind bars before they poison his politics any further. Maybe rat effery is slightly more tolerable if it's for a good cause. I'm probably going to screw this all up, I'll be honest. I've tried this off in my own time, I think. But it just didn't go so well. Especially when I was trying to get, like, Yaki in charge or someone else, like, Gus Hall or something like that. So, shady measures. Followed up with... I'm actually, this part, I'm going to try to bounce between these two as well. Uh, let's do IRS Audits first. Al Capone's sprawling empire bootleggers and mafiosos went under not because of his misdeeds as he, as head of the infamous Chicago outfit, but because of a record of tax evasion sn sniffed out by none other than the IRS. I'll say what you will about America's pencil-pushing tax collectors, but they must have done something right if they were able to accomplish what so many commissioners either can or won't. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. President Goldwater aims to use the IRS as a weapon like in the prohibition, but against America's domestic enemies this time around. Target investigations over extremist finances will eventually triple over a case of fraud, evasion, or embezzlement, giving us all the excuse we need to shut, shut their gatherings down when we see them. And China modernizes. Good job, China. Twenty out of seventy, huh? To how do we shut down the AFLCI? Involve this FBI. Gather intelligence. Create watch list. Eh, we'll see what happens. Involve the FBI. This seems like it can't go wrong, right? Oh, trample collectivism. To complete this mission, we need to successfully ban the AFL CIO and squash the far left before the mission completes. Oh, so you need to do this AFL and the far left. So we fail. That's not going to help us very, very much. Hmm. Ostracize. Ban the AFL CIO. Hmm. Third. Oh, we have a lot more in debt now. Holy crap! <sighs> Fight fascism has not completed focus financial reform. Hmm. We are very conservative. Focus on the socialists. I'll be honest here. I like a lot of you guys. Some of you guys want me. To, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. But what you want me to do? Some of you guys want me to take out Yaki. Some of you guys want me to take out Gus Hall, basically. Um, friend, America's no friend of fascism. Which makes sense for what we want. However, at the same time, I do want to take out the AFL-CIO. So, it's not enough. It's still ongoing. Constitution demands it. It's not enough. But, if we have this ability now to trample these guys... Like I said earlier, and someone said earlier, Goldwater is Jewish, so getting rid of Yaki would be a good place. And we also, this time... Try to get rid of we have you know Goldwater's way. We don't, we did not do the party's line. The right choice goods from just partners. So we're really against fascists here. So technically we don't have to do this one. So I think overall for this campaign we're going to try to beat up Yaki. We're going to target the Yaki's because like I said earlier, there's not a lot of communist influence here, especially between the Siberian Republic and the people's uh, Russian People's Union. Really not a lot of you know. Communist influence here, so I think we'll probably go with target the Yaki's for this campaign. And I'm gonna just and as someone said, I should compromise and just straight up ban all the unions. We'll try to be balanced here. We'll see what happens. Target the Yaki's. Socialism may be an old enemy of the American way, but even a conservative can admit that both ideologies agree to some extent on the values of freedom and the rights of man. These similarities make socialism familiar, comforting even to many Americans for all its faults. However, they disagree on the means to achieve peace and prosperity for our people. Either side's adherents can take comfort in knowing that the other will eventually be swayed to their heirs because of the common goal they share. Fascism, on the other hand, defies unthinking obedience and lionizes the omnipotence of strongmen. Nowhere else can one find an ideology more antithematic to American values than the Reich's slavish adherence to the supremacy of one race over all of mankind. The 
Stunned by this unnatural foe and their present sympathizers within the U U.S., President Goldwater is convinced to set aside a century-old blood feud with the socialism for the time being. These Yawkeys are nothing but rebranded fascists. Check the books. Barry Goldwater found the average tax record as exciting as most people, as the IRS was a potentially dangerous arm of an overextended government. Today, however, he was enthusiastically reading the report the IRS commissioner had sent over last night, and warmly greeted the man when he arrived at the Oval Office. You know, Commissioner, most of the times, I'm not too fond of getting letters from your office, but if you keep sending me messages like this, I might change my tune. The commissioner grinned and withdrew a folder from his briefcase, a copy of the records the president been pursuing. Your request for us to look into the financial activities of the various extremist groups has led to some very interesting discoveries. Nothing we can prosecute for, not yet, but there's a decent bit of it, evidence here suggesting that there are more threads we can pull on. Which one of these groups do you want us to go after? All of them. Mr. President, we can't do a mass investigation of... Commissioner, I understand there are laws that need to be followed, but this situation demands extreme measures. Extremists of all stripes have to perform criminal acts to continue being functional organizations. They are seditious revolutionaries who have no respect for the laws and customs of our nation and will tear down the laws we're trying to force on them now. Start digging and you'll find something. Half an hour later, the commissioner left with a new plan of attack. Three months of raids left on far left and far right groups, then more to follow. Catch him like we caught Capone. Nice. Cool. <coughs> Gather intelligence. Track him down. Create watch lists. And someone told me that I shouldn't do this, but I'll see what happens, because this is my first time doing it on, like, showing on the channel, so... <sighs> far left, and, and successfully ban the AFL. Maybe we won't ban it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see how far... Maybe we won't go extreme for this one. Hmm. Maybe the next time we will. Maybe the next time we will, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. Gathering intelligence. Sounds like a good idea. And then, create watch lists. Sure. Why not? What could, What's the worst that could happen? I just want to cut down the debt, man. Just want to cut down the debt. Suppress the yawks for now. Wow, we got rid of a lot of debt there. Suppress the yawks. And we'll see about the unions. Alright, anything else here? Intelligence, champ collectivism, which we'll do in another campaign, probably. So, necessary and expedient. The standoff took place at the mid-morning, uh, beginning with three sharp raps on the door of the apartment. The man who answered wore pajamas and a tired sneer as he stared down at Special Agent Matt Richards of the FBI. Then glanced into the hallway to see the other dozen or so raiders waiting for him. Hey, now, I haven't done anything. Mr. Belmont, I've got a warrant to search your home under title one of the Alien Registration Act, suspicion of subversive... Well, you can't come in. I haven't subverted a thing. And I'll be darned if I let some cronies of the Goldwater's Jews come and ransack my... His retort was cut off by Richards pushing him. This is a violation of the Bill of Rights. You thug, you'll get what you deserve. Search everywhere, said Richards, casually yanking out cushions from underneath uh, the couch and sca scattering them on the floor. You never know where these rats like to hide things. You got anything you want to tell us about, Mr. Belmont? I'm not telling you a darn thing. How many shekels are they paying you pigs to turn on your own race? Not enough to deal with you, muttered Richards, tearing books from a shelf and shuffling them through them before hurling them into the rapidly expanding clutter of the living room. The National uh, Renaissance Party is being run here, right? Out of, your, out of your apartment? You should really clean up if you're having company over. Another book of esoterica. Join the pile, and Richards pushed over the shelf for good measure. And after, an hour after of searching later, the raiders departed, leaving chaos and broken furniture in the wake. Nothing of interest had been found, which was disappointing, but who cared about the legal complaints of a few extremists? There was an SDS meeting to go break up a nearby college. Kick the hornet's nest until they stopped sting stinging. Ah, yes. Sounds like a really good idea. Anything here? Eh, I kind of wait. So. Target them yaks? Wiretap the yaks. <coughs> Francis Parker Yaki is to put a mildly fascism's messiah in the U.S. Despite the hate in some cases because of the hate, that leaves his mouth as spittle as he's garnered himself a steadily growing base of disaffected Americans from all walks of life. All willing to hear his proffered solutions to the many problems. Often these solutions involve the brutal acts his Nazi inspirations conduct, chief among them wanton violence and the persecution of America's sheltered oppressed. Just as mildly put as President Goldwater's antipathy for a man who would shoot him out of a principled hatred for his father's ancestry, an intern questioned if his personal spy for the beloved fascists had driven the order to ruin him with blackmail from CIA infiltrators. To that, the Arizonian simply answered with a knowing smile and a pithy about cutting a snake's off a snake's head off before it can slither away. The conscience of a conservative, Barry Goldwater presented a stern but appreciative face as he spoke the final line of his oath of office and took to stand once more. The crowd before him applauded enthusiastically. Many of them lifelong Democrats, some who had been briefly tempted away by the right NPP, and some who were new faces. All of them had come to, to, to lead them come to him to lead them for four more years, and it was all his good and honorable duty to give, give them what they wished for. There were some of his actions which may call some may call callous. But he did it all in the name of making America strong and self-reliant as need to be to stare down the forces of evil lurking overseas. 
The first and only duties of a nation's government must be to oversee the security of its people and to provide a hall in which the voice of the nation can be heard and debated. These past four years, which we have worked to return our government to this core directive, shutting it with the way of the naivety of well-meaning men who bloated and extended the federal reach with their grandiose designs and passion projects, to glue true glory of this land lies not in what the government can do, but instead in what its people can do. I promise to you, America, that we will continue to stand tall against the world of hatred. Our hearts and minds are stronger than the forces of fascism can ever comprehend. Through rugged determination, ingenuity, wit, and cunning, we can continue to be a beacon of light upon this earth. America is strong, and its people are stronger still, and we must never let our determination to better ourselves ever waver. Goldwater allowed himself a small style as the cheers washed over him. He must be proud of, after all, with a strong military that the fascists would never dare challenge, a responsible people who would, never, who would look to their own betterment, and a government that would not have to take power from the people as much as they gave away. He was securing the future of the American nation. It was a future that, if his victory was anything to go by, was one of the people were quite looking forward to. Let us extend freedom to, oh, let us extend freedom to all. Don't worry about the wiretapping, though. Shh. So we're at 30 out of 70. Um, that's not good. We have no evidence. Um, tighten loose ends. Lower maximum risk progress. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done stuff yet. Sacrifice evidence. Maybe I shouldn't have done stuff yet. We'll lose a piece of evidence. We'll greatly increase our maximum risk progress. Uh, increase FBI funding. 50 million? Yep, that's, yeah. Would be noticeable. And eh, whatever. Infiltration success. As the investigative arm of the federal government, is the Federal Bureau of Investigation's responsibility to look into possible all threats, all possible threats, which uh, imperil America from within. Be it foreign espionage or organized crime, the FBI leverages a large network of informants and agents spread across all 50 states to paralyze their activities and bring their masterminds to justice. This crucial nature of its mission has also compelled Congress to bestow the agency with powers which are somewhat questionable in the constitutionality, if not explicitly. Then, through implicit assent, some rights have to be away, this proponents argue, in order to fashion a weapon to banish greater evils. Evils that continue greater than wiretapping and enhanced interrogation. Having acquired a set of scent from the White House, the FBI now turns its all-seeing eye towards America's trade unions. Searching for the skeletons, they've surely kept away from the uh, valorous image. Everyone has their skeletons, after all. Least of all large organizations with money and pull to draw America's hard workers by the millions. This action was a little surprise for President Goldwater's cl close counsel, as legendary antipathy for bloated rackets led by the most corrupt men corrupt of men, was well known within the Beltway and beyond. Director Hoover assuaged concerns of a slip-up escalating into a scandal, arriving the Nixon deba debacle, saying that his men are, to quote verbatim, competent enough to not get caught by some reds and rent a cops. His agents will get away with, with dirt without leaving a fingerprint. So far. The director's words ring true. After mere days of planning and observation, a clandestine break-in of an office building events... Uh, the corruption President Goldwater rallied against. Gifts to fellow union bosses, membership fees creatively deducted from annual earnings reports, officers buying twice what they make in a month. The subsequent leak to the media from a concerned insider made certain of the union's demise from both public shame and public lawsuits. And so the hypocrite gets his due. We got one piece of evidence. More funding. We're going to need more political power now. So we're not going to cut down uh, civilian spending yet. Sacrifice evidence. Greatly and slightly lower monthly risk gain. 35 I should have, I probably really should have waited for this. So I'm probably going to have to redo part of this off screen, but whatever. Find them, train them, and I strike. Um, now let's go with investigate the KKK. By 1960, the infamous cross burn and lynch mob had dwindled from its peak of 6 million in the roaring 20s to several thousand at best, united only by their opposition to the civil rights movement. Nevertheless, the word of Klansmen is half hefty weight still in the sympathetic South, and they continue to terrorize unimpeded the lives of the families throughout the Black Belt. With rumors saying that the Imperial Wizard had professed his support for Yaki's burgeoning movement, President Goldwater now is an alibi to justify going after them in front of his advisors. All now he needs is convincing enough excuse to lock them up for life. Nice. Yeah, I should have waited to do this stuff as well, but whatever. Spies never sleep. A subtle click in the darkness, metal against metal, a few scraps, barely audible. A sudden clunk, a door creaking open. Warm yellow light spilling into the stately hotel room, flowing over the richly upholstered couches and deep plush bed. Shadow passing over the brief, brief wedge of light, a silhouette slinks in sight, closing the door behind him, careful not to make a noise. For a moment, all, all is as it was before the shadowy figures of trespass, still, silent, dark. A flashlight disguised as a ballpoint pen strikes, pointing a beam of thin blue light across the shag carpet. The man holding it slips out of his shoes and paces soundlessly across the carpet, anxious to finish his job quickly. He knows the impulse is absurd, the room's tenant being kept busy by a pair of dazzlingly beautiful women downstairs on the casino's floor. Why do these fat, balding old men never get suspicious when the centerfold girls half their age suddenly find them impossibly alluring? Supposedly, he shouldn't complain as it made his job a heck of a lot easier. He got to work. In the space of a few minutes, pen light held in his mouth, he had all bugs all over the room in its ensuant bathroom, in the light fixtures, vents, closet, and telephone. A secret meeting the room's tenant would be holding in the morning had, thanks to the Bureau's plants and his extremist group, remained secret for about ten minutes. Now they'd hear every word those fascist dudes said. 
Agent smiled as he made back to the door. It made his way back to the door. Like President Goldwater, he was Jewish. And followed a certain righteousness in foiling the plans of Yaki's men. In bugged and wiretapped rooms all across America, Yaki and his supporters would be spilling their secrets to the Bureau. They'd be hard pressed to subvert democracy with Uncle Sam always knowing what they were up to. Taking a quick look around to make sure everything else was as he left it, he slipped his shoes back on and slipped out the door, plunging the room once again into the darkness. A secret known by more than one man is not a secret. Who's this one? Gain additional evidence? Ooh, I hope we can. But I do want to kind of calm down and do that. I do want to get rid of the Yaki stuff first, so we'll see what happens. How are we already half an hour in this video? That makes no sense. I enjoy this way too much. <clears throat> ah, I'm proofing my compounds. Very nice. After the KKK. We're going to go do dig up evidence. There must be something inherent to an extremist mindset President Goldwater wondered, but that's not only inclined them towards hypocrisy, but also shielded the world view from the dissonance it caused. The latest dispatch from Hoover's agents only confirmed the suspicion. Why else would a tablecloth parade founded in direct opposition to the evil, that is, respect for your black compatriots, apparently enjoy their ebony as much as any hot-blooded teenager with a roaming imagination? Personally, he couldn't care less about the smut some lynch and schmuck consumes. The folks around him, on the other hand, friends, family, southerners, national progressives, they probably will. What do you mean... A teenager with a roaming Im imagination. You don't have to be a teenager for that. Any anyways. Um, huh. Words that kill. The man in the gray sprinted down the moonlit sidewalk. Leather shoes splashing in filthy puddles as he plunged his silhouetted uh, quarry through the fog. He could hear the man's labored breath as he stumbled over a loose stone, hard face and quantico fit. He fingered the revolver in his coat pocket, knowing it was only a matter of seconds until he caught his prey, panting and gasping like the obese hog he was. Oh, he thought he was so clever, unlike the rest of the adults in the local chapter. That fat dude had seen fit to question the man's sudden appearance at the weekly meetings. Far too clever for his own good, the pig had finally cornered him and uttered the words that would seal his fate. <clears throat> for once, he had been accused of being an FBI plant. The agent had no choice but to eliminate the swine to keep his cover. Dead end. His quarry spun around. Uh, beady eyes, beady little eyes, barely visible through the fog. He began to beg for his life, but he was quickly cut off by a bullet to the brain. His corpulent body slumped to the rain water slick pavement, a thin line of blood slowly leaking out onto the concrete. The agent spun at the sound of distant tire, startled at the appearance of a pair of headlights approaching out of the fog, staring at him down like judging eyes. Shoving the revolver in his coat pocket, he clambered over the chain league fence and skidded down a muddy slope to the street below, making his escape into a knot of twisting alleys. The newspapers would call it a senseless murder, motiveless, no suspect. Used car salesman, father of three, devoted husband, and pillar of the community, and though it was not printed, Cloakard, Cloakard of the local chapter of the KKK. With his death, the agent's anonymity was safe, allowing him to continue reporting on their seditious behavior, sifting for dirt to take them down. For years to come, people walking that stretch of pavement would point the dark and blood stain out of their friends and wondered who it had been. Who it had it been. Nothing is more vulnerable than a man with secrets. Crackdown of fascism. Oh, we suddenly I'll get rid of the KKK. You know what? I want to... There we go. Decrease the poverty. What I would like to do is actually spend more. Because it only gives 0.51 every day, which is not going to be enough, probably. Mm, we'll see, though. Introduce poverty. There you go. Okay, never mind. Minus 32 billion. We could probably do that. Actually, do this again. What if we do that? Okay, you know what? I'm okay with that. With 0.51, we go to 0.59. That's not, that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. Uh, that's alright, though. Yeah, I should have waited to do this one. We have one piece of evidence. We could sacrifice evidence ago. Information review on the KKK. Have it act like a report to El Presidente on the inside workings of the KKK and especially the past of some of their leaders. Also shady plans and stuff they're organizing. Nothing's more vulnerable than a man with secrets. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Digging up evidence. And we do this one. It was pitch black in the White House when the phone rang. Director Hoover's gra gravelly voice carried through the receiver as pride awake. Uh, Barry Goldwater picked it up. He reported that he had finished gathering every last speck of dirt on Yaki and a surprisingly wide network of donors, advisors, henchmen, and advocates. The good director likened the experience of opening an, uh, Matryoshka. Matryoshka doll. Opening one reveals another, and another, and another, all the way to D.C. and the party's leadership. With the big names his agents had dug out, the debauchery they kept far away from the public's noses, an anonymous midnight leak into the Beltway's press corps will tear a third of the MPP apart the following morning. The bleary-eyed president approved Director Hoover's innocuous suggestion before it went back to sleep. The covers felt like a touch softer than that, than usual that night. Oh god, I love soft, soft covers. Oh my goodness. Oh... Get me nice and soft. Ooh, to catch a spider. FBI Special Agent Arthur Crandall stepped out of the car, exhaling a thin stream of white smoke. 
He dropped his lit cigarette and ground it into the asphalt. What a litter. I thought we were here supposed to be protecting the environment. The puddles cover in the parking lot of the Philadelphia Sheraton Hotel. Remnants of that morning storm glimmered like countless diamonds in the rays of sunlight poking through the clouds around him. Three unmarked black cars screaming to the parking lot, disorganizing or disorging a dozen hard-faced men in black suits. Crandall gave the signal and they strode towards the hotel. Their deep cover boys and extremist group had finally uncovered actionable intel on the greatest threat to the U.S. The infamous fascist ideologue Francis Parker Yaki. After warming his way into Yaki's circle, an agent had reported at Quantico that Yaki always had with him a suitcase filled with forged passports with false identities. Mexican, Swedish, Australian, no doubt. As insurance, should he ever be forced to flee the country. Ironically, his attempt to escape the law had attracted them, or to him, like a moth, to a light before the day ended. Crandall would see the Nazi dude in the cuffs. Crandall and his boys march across Sheraton's opulent lobby, making no effort to wipe their feet. He flashed his badge in an irate desk clerk, and without breaking his stride, flung open the doors to the convention hall where Yaki and his co coder were supposed to be hosting a fundraising event. Instantly, he felt something was wrong. A hundred faces turned to him, but none of them were Yaki's. Gorge rising. His eyes groped for the sign proclaiming the name of the event. Christian mothers for teenage abstinence. Swinging his gaze back to the conventioners, he realized with a lurch of the stomach that they were middle-aged ladies one and all. Sputtering apologies, he slammed the doors behind him. The dude had flown the coop. Ignoring their crap-eating smirks, Crandall glanced over his men, wondering which one of them was a snitch, and then gruffly gave the order to return to the cars. They wouldn't get their man today. He was, Crandall reflected with irritation, probably already sipping a scotch and soda in an airplane bound for South America. Well, a man like Yaki wouldn't run forever. He'd come back, and when he did, they'd get him. What a tangled web we weave. Who's a snitch? America's no friend of fascism. Watching America's fascism implode from the distance gave prison Goldwater no small helping of satisfaction. How they hobbled into Congress with disheveled hair and bloodshot eyes, making like cornered hyenas wherever their fellow critter passed by. How they delivered yesterday's stump speeches with sore throats and a faction of the energy. How they sat next to one another as if they were bunkmates with Satan himself. The debacle that had played itself out in the days and weeks after was what he'd asked for and more. And I apologize for this, but we're going to go and grab another upgrade for ourselves here. That's a little bit of time, but I don't care. And fittingly, Yaki was nowhere to be found. So much for a man who thought himself an American Hitler, the son of a Jew, nipped his little pooch in the bud. Imagine that! The irony was thick as buttermilk and just as sweet. But the cheery on top was a nondescript letter from one Gus Hall. Goldwater swore he could hear grumbling from the neat cursive that offered the communist congratulations and thanks, all told. America's true loyalties reasserted themselves as soon as the fascist malcontents began cannibalizing one another to irrelevance. No friend of the Reich's poison, honey, indeed. Fear itself. Don O'Brien tripped in his bustle and fell. Face first onto the carpet, shattering his spectacles and dropping the box, his contents spilling over the floor. Brushing aside the broken glass, he hurriedly shoved the items back into the box and stood, knees popping to make his way to his backyard. Donald kicked the screen door open and stumbled out into the warm Georgia evening. The cicadas playing their nightly symphony as the sky darkened to a deep indigo, ignoring their simple beauty to, of, of nature around. Donald made a beeline for his charcoal-stained old fire pit. Without ceremony, he dumped the box among the ashes, squirted it with kerosene, and lit it with a thrown match. Tongues of fire redirected in his eyes. Donald watched the flames consume his robes, the dark green fabric of the dr Grand Dragon crumbling into ash. Although he told himself that what he did was out of simple pragmatism, Donald was afraid. A fear for that would rule him for the rest of his days, he frowned as he stared into the flames. Following the radio's announcement that the Klan would be banned as leaders arrested, a thousand similar scenes played out across America. In a single night, the power and organization of the Klan was decisively crushed by the president's agents, by methods of sometimes arguable legitimacy. Nevertheless, there was a change in the air. A new era was dawning, one in which black people could walk the streets without fear. There would be tormentors hiding inside, peering with bloodshot eyes throughout to the Venetian blinds, forever wondering, wondering if today would be the last, would be the day they got the call in the night. Once their aid is gone, men must learn to deal with their pain. Yeah, I think I, I did this way too early. We need uh, no, some more evidence, though. You that one too. 55 out of 86 is really bad. What if we do this one more time? It's only going up. Got, went up by another 10. That's nice. Another 10. Cool. It's costing us so much every year, but I don't care. A quiet morning in D.C. Uh, the winds of justice blow through America, clenching out the stench of malice uh, and corruption. No longer will we suffer the sedition of Yaki and the fascists and his infernal cautery. All over the country, Yaki's web of shell corporations are being raided, his inner circles arrested on whatever charges we can reasonably expect a jury to believe, and membership in his political organizations made illegal. Although the man himself has vanished, presumably on his way to safe haven in Europe or South America on a phony passport, we've torn his power to shreds, and in doing so, we've excised the pulsing tumor at the nation's heart. Thankfully, there's been little backlash to our persecution of the fascist fifth columnist lurking within our society. Yaki has long been a stand on the MPP, and as much as they'd love to denounce us for attacking their party members, they can't do so without looking like they're endorsing a sick ideology, after all. Joe Citizen has little sympathy for fascism, after the humiliations heaped upon us by Germany and Japan. Enjoying his morning coffee, of course. President Goldwater allowed himself a moment of quiet triumph. 
He felt like the hero slaying the dragon in those old adventure tales he'd read as a kid, all those years ago in the hazy Arizona of his memory. He'd broken the back of Yaki, the Jew hater, the would be imperator. Never again would he or his elk threaten America. The president smiled as the sun crusted over the horizon and sipped his coffee. It tasted like victory, and it won't happen here. But you know what we have to do? <coughs> oh, begin the rest. Nice. Suppress their votes, the rest of the leaders, the good stuff. We've gathered enough material from the first few names in President Goldwater's new watch list to issue warrants for the rest with a healthy degree of plausible deniability on our part. Seeing the program's overwhelming success, he has encouraged the FBI to expand the list with names it's comfortable going after. If everything goes as planned, then American extremism will eventually be found only within the Gray Bar Hotel, kept far away from the rest of society. Since we're doing stuff ahead of time, just do this one too. 42 days, I don't care. And then, in America free of extremism. Barry Goldwater knew he'd accomplish his mission not through some flashy watershed moment, but through normalcy's grandual return. Torn off the a hefty chunk of their misfits, the MPP had finally stabilized itself into a rocky steady. Rock steady opposition with more in common with each other beyond foreign policy. Resultingly, some sense of common decency and good faith had returned to the de debates in Capitol Hill. Minuscule compared to the genteel pre-depression beltway politics, but present ne nevertheless. It was fair to say that, despite the rhetoric banded about, Congress was the friendliest these last few days and had been in 20 years. Great men often tell the long nights and sleep-tossing agony before and after making a hard choice. With the knowledge of this, that his calls had cured American politics of a potent fatal poison, Barry slept like a newborn babe. Marilyn Massacre, Baltimore. In a stunning display of may midday mayhem, police responding to a domestic disturbance called at around 1.30 p.m. in the suburb of Ellicott City found themselves under fire. Officer Alistair McKinnon was killed instantly, his partner Officer Brock Tarrant, taking cover and calling for the reinforcements. A tense seven-hour siege ensued with the perpetrators, perpetrators. An FBI negotiator was brought in from Quantico, but the perpetrators refused to respond to any attempts at communication and fired on police when they attempted to recover Officer McKinnon's body. The dramatic exchange captured in a film. On the governor's order, the FBI stood down and the perpetrators were engaged by riot police. By 8.45 p.m., the police had breached the house and killed all four perpetrators, all confirmed to be white males aged 22 to 38. They also took one armed white female into custody. Upon investigation of documents recovered at the scene, the perpetrators have been identified as members of a fringe right terrorist group comprised of former followers of fascist criminal Fa Francis Yaki. Though it may be sound incredible, according to the records, the group calling themselves the Avengers for America were formulating a plan to assassinate the Hollywood actress and spoke outspoken left-wing activist Jane Fonda for a connection to the Black Panther Party on an upcoming film shoot in Maryland for now. Miss Fonda and the residents of Baltimore can rest easy knowing another threat to their freedom has been defeated. President Goldwater set the newspaper down to look over the photographs. One filled almost half a page showing Officer Tarrant in a particularly heroic pose, engaging the Yaquiites as his fellows attempted to retrieve the supine body of his murdered partner. After some consideration of the PR benefits, Goldwater picked up the phone. Perhaps they could use Officer Terrence mopping up the dregs. Nice. As long as we get more support, that's what matters. No debt here in America, please. No debt. No D word. And we're still building up a lot of air bases, which is kind of dumb, but whatever. Right, yeah. Officer Terrence st stands with Hall. Scowl. And President Goldwater seriously considered... Irishing, irishing up his coffee as he walked Brock Terrant, recently cap catapulted to national stardom as a hero cop of the recent police siege against a remnant Yakia chapter, giving support to the seditious uh, crypto commie Gussall at an LNPP rally in Baltimore. Goldwater's advisors to try to get Tarrant on the side to squeeze some good PR out of the situation, but he rejected them out of hand. Surprisingly, the all-American corn-fed football-playing beer-drinking Maryland cop turned out to be as red as cherry pie due to his upbringing and raised in an odd socialist commie by a pair of avowed leftists. Thanks to Tarrant recently becoming a household name, his public endorsement of Hall has had the same effect for the usually obscure leftist faction of the MPP. Capitulating? Capitulating them? No. Capa catapulting them, and Hall to the forefront of the public's attention. To go to consternation, he already heard whispers about Hall using the momentum from Terrence's endorsement stand for the NPP's nomination in 72. Irritating that a single nobody could have had this much impact without the president. If it wasn't for that photo photographer being in the right place at the right time, Terrence would still be just another Joe Schlove and Hall would be an obscure nobody. Sipping his coffee, the president wondered what to do about the situation. It could put an end to the little commie propaganda campaign, but it might look like a restriction of freedom or free speech. Alternatively, he could just ignore it and let them have their poster boy. No doubt they'd run out of steam soon enough. This little dog barks too much. Strap a muzzle on him. Let him have his 15 minutes of fame. Uh, popular grows. Far right popularity grows low. You know what? Let him have 15 minutes of fame. We don't want to have too many issues here, so we're kind of okay with that for now. Yeah. We'll do the best we can with it. Nice. Well, America free of extremism. But just don't mind me suppressing people. A modern banking system. I kind of want to see what that does. Um, how bad are we looking down here? It's not bad. Get more funding for these guys. Strong. Noticeable. 
four. We need more evidence. What we're trying to get increased FBI funding. Can you do it one more time? 116 is not bad. Cool. <coughs> I do want to do this one really badly, but we have some time probably still, so deal with widespread corruption. One of the key pillars of union support the president long realized is the Senate itself. To be specific, certain senators in labor-friendly states in a manner of speaking. Lamentably, even statesmen of such caliber are not immune to pe pecuniary concerns, and it is of these concerns which which bosses of ill-begotten wealth and renown offer to ameliorate. For a price, of course. After all, it's only fair for a man to ask compensation of equal value to his services. And so with bare naked bribes conducted behind doors or reprehensible, are shielded against justice's otherwise terrible approach by a bulwark of pocket bulging congressmen. President Goldwater believes addressing this with the hammer of public opinion if need be takes precedence over other concerns. I could cut construction spending, but eh, that'd be kind of a waste. And the program? No, no, no. Hopefully get some more... Oh. You gotta do that one too. Um, get more political power, but more evidence. I'm not sure if we really want to get rid of the group. We'll see what happens. Less than a billion in debt, so that's awesome. George Wallace, LBJ, R. He's not dead. RFK. Nice. Nice. Very awesome. Anything else here? No, yep. So, when do we get more evidence? I guess on the senator's payroll. No American likes to vote for someone whose actions go against the conscious. Else they would not have flocked to those who present themselves as capable whilst without sin. An ideal world might grant their wishful thinking some physical manifestation. Alas, no man in this sinful earth is rid of it, not completely. And politicians, as centuries of human history have demonstrated, tend to bear more sins than any other man. In pursuit of their coveted positions, senators are no different in this respect. In most cases, their reputation is the first and only bulwark against the truth, yet one which has proved its resilience time after time. But with the right attack ads, messy, unglamorous, or dishonorable attack ads, at the right occasion, a skillful man could bypass this bulwark of illuminate and illuminate these hidden sins for all of America's seat. Heard the popular left and center? Oh, that's not bad. Follow the money. A few days later, the Washington Post issued an article about Congressman so-and-so from the great state of Michigan receiving money donations from the United Automobile Workers last election. It had caused a minor scandal in the lead-up, but it was soon forgotten after his victory. Barry suspected that these deals had come, become far too commonplace for the Midwest politicians to garner their concern. The statesmen of Congress are no less vulnerable to pecuniary concerns than the working man, after all. What was a little quid pro quo with the local union for some pocket change? Naturally, any man of principle would feel incensed at such blatant corruption. The Arizona man himself was reminded too much of New York and old Tamami Hall, a well-oiled machine of bribes, favors, and ballot boxes for comfort. And so it was with that he just said as much to Don in private lunch, to which the Secretary of the Treasury replied truckingly, You've got, You're the government, Barry, and the government solves problems, don't it? On the widespread corruption in Congress, break the pyramid scheme. Socialism has always relied on ludicrous and untenable promises to entice the gullible into its ranks. Free health care, free housing, free money, all in the palm of your grubby hands. But if, if and only if you'll tell some others to come work with them too. In such a manner does it get zealous servants while only paying them pennies and get a pat on the back for the good work. Unsurprisingly, they'll spawn, they're spawn the trade unions emulate emulate its progenitor. America's unions get membership dues and oaths of loyalty out of their peons and nothing to give them but the euphoria of belonging to some higher cause. A card of pyramids is held together by simple gravity. But with one good kick, believes President Goldwater, might just come crashing on down. So we didn't get the other stuff yet, so... Holy crap, that is high. Why is this going down some more? Oh, I could sacrifice one, but we need one... Why are we not getting one more piece of evidence? That doesn't make any sense to me. We're ready for anything anyway, so... I wonder how bad... If we got found out, which we probably... I do want to read what it says like when we, when we do get found out, but like... Huh. It is 73. How's Russia... Did anyone unify Russia yet? There you go. Do, do it again. And we're almost out of political power, so we have to hold on to some more right now. Nice. Breaking their pyramid scheme. <coughs> cool. Anything else here? Not really yet. Investigate recruitment methods. Recruitment methods. Despite the expectations of our lion forefathers, socialism hasn't weathered into nothing against the light of church and reason. Instead, it is a mass strength with every co convert, turning it into a beast. Oh. oh. Stain with the crimson of its terrible banners. No force seems enough to banish it fully, as if it were a hydra that gains a hundred heads for each severed neck. Why and how socialism has become so is a query that has driven many conservatives to drink in desperate prayer. Even while a red noose tightens around their own necks, the president does not wish to give the socialists any further opportunities to oust him from the White House. To that end, Director Hoover shall task, task his agents to uncover the nature of America's red hydra, and how it gains such widespread appeal with such a god fearing people's Americans. Yeah, this is glitch. This has got to be glitch, man. We spent so much to get one piece of evidence. We did it twice. 
How do we not have two? Us is here right now. Joseph Miller was one of the lucky few seamen in his crew. Not many people made it out alive of that ship, but he was one of the fortunate ones. Ever since that fateful day midway, Joseph does his best working as a shift manager at a factory. The better and better offense are good. He lives comfortably with his wife and two children. He's active in his community, gives rifle lessons, and recently spoke at his town hall. He's one of the few, one of the many people who voted in the last elections. Today, Joseph woke up bright and early, as he typically does. He usually likes to start his day off with a shower, and then re reading the morning papers, Lucy makes him and the kids some breakfast. But this morning was a bit different. The paper boy came early. A few people were already outside their homes, so it must have been important. With a stretch and a groan, Joseph opened the front door, picked up from the paper. MPP officials in Washington taking money from Japan. A splattered on the front. Joseph rubbed his eyes, making sure that what he was seeing was true. With a pause, he closes the door and sits down at the dinner table. Honey, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Yes, Lucy. Apparently, the neighbors thought today's paper is interesting. I don't blame them. People in these parts voted straight down the line for the MPP. Maybe it was out of solidarity for our brothers in California. Maybe it was because of how hard everyone here was hit by the war. Maybe it was just how things were here. But the more Joseph read of the paper, the more frustrated he got. To think of the people he voted for are taking money from the people who shot his brother's plane infuriated him. He put the paper down and sighs heavily. If there is change to come this November, it will certainly not be for a party which is funded by warmongers. For a party of the people, they sure take a lot out, take a lot of outside money. Hello. Is it Italy? Italy wants to assume leadership, but they're nowhere near so of assuming leadership, which is good for us, but still. Yeah, this is not good. Yeah, I, this one, I don't know. This seems like it should, could be reworked a little bit more, especially if we don't get evidence. I don't know. This is... I don't know. I'm sure... The devs are looking pretty much everything that might get a potential rework someday, but mm, we'll see. And it's only going by 1.37. Uh, we probably won't get this one done either. Uh, probably not that one. This one, we'd probably get better army professionalism. Nice. We'll probably go to <coughs> Spartan Army. That seems kind of cool for America. Yeah, we'll take it. I'll gladly take that. Come over here and do that too. Get more uh, civvies, basically. Basically getting more civvies. Wait, why can't we take these now? Oh, we have more down here. Yeah, I don't know. It seems a little glitched. Cause there's no way to lower their the AFL's influence. And we could sacrifice the evidence. Target labor leaders. For all that the socialists depict themselves as a formless, inscrutable wave of coalesced anger, the structures of their organization adhere to physical law better than their rhetoric. A mob, regardless of ideology, will always rally around men of action and results. Men who have proven their worth in the eyes of the lessers, and who have the means to direct their zeal towards the cause as ends. Equally true, then, is the corollary that a mob scatters like dust before wind without a leader to guide them. For a movement that derives its strength from countless many mobs, an equally countless number of leaders is their dearest direst necessity, and the weakest link. The next step forward has thus revealed itself in the eyes of President Goldwater's vengeful government. Obtain evidence that can be used in a fight against the unions. Can I just get one more evidence, like, naturally? This doesn't make any sense. We're spending so much political power for this crap, and we're not getting any other evidence. The Great Khan. Favors, promises, and bribes. These three, much more than skill, finesse, or luck, pave the trodden path to success. Companies, friendships, and even governments aren't immune to this ugly manifestation of human nature. Barry need only glance at the muck and grime in Capitol Hill he'd seen since his tenure as senator to impress that immutable fact into his head. Labor unions are, of course, no different. While else would so many millions flock under their cogs and hammers and sickles, their playbook is a masterstroke in both its simplicity and grasp of men's inner machinations. Workers join a union and get all these wonderful benefits, but not before coughing up their cash every now and then and pledging the fealty. Just like that, John Doe gets conned out of his both the savings and his free will, tempted by the money to hedge their bets on collective fraud disguised as a highway to a wonderful career, for the rudely awakened. Well, peer pressure and the threat of exile do just fine keeping these comrades in line. Meanwhile, their bosses are free to do whatever they can, or they will, with countless millions in ill-gotten paychecks. Despicable and abhorrent, but successful all the same. This time, the Rosenberry's mug was strong and potent, scalding, bitter. It roiled and burbled on his tongue as he read one of the several thousand tragedies the White House's mailbox had received since his announcement, or has announced his war on union corruption. After reaching the last dot, he tossed the letter aside and scratched out another missive to Directive Hoover. Something had to be done before these duplicitous vanguards of workers' rights swindled another hard-working American, letting the FBI inspect their sales pitches as good as the first step as any. God forbid it's already too late. Oh, God. Yeah, this is this is not fair. It, it's just not fair. I mean, I could sacrifice it. Increase the maximum risk product, slightly lower monthly risk game. One fourteen. So what happens next month? Well, how high is it going to go up? Some results. The FBI's first few reports confirmed buried suspicions, false advertising, and other forms of bad practice did pay a large part in boosting the union's numbers to record highs. 
Pile after downing pile of affidavits form the same story, all of different names and details. First, the former to join the union. First, the offer to join the union, front-loading poor schmucks with benefits and packages they're supposed to gain. If they refuse to shake down that escorts into a span of weeks until they acquiesce, they acquiesce or leave. So-called scabs have no place with the boys. After all, more importantly, bosses love to see their numbers grow. <coughs> what happened afterwards resembled more of a protection racket than a con confraternity of workers. After mentioned benefits were delayed due to supposed problems with their employer. All the while, payments were leaving their own owners for their own boss's pockets. The union stifled all attempts to speak out against such cases of unfair treatment, either with community conformity or with brute thugs masquerading as their comrades glowering, glowering behind every eye corner. Left with no other recourse, these men took the federal government's hand, no matter how questionable its presence, if it meant them the chances to sterilize these reservoirs of corruption from the top to bottom. Now what do we do with all these, he asked himself. And they'll probably end observe union election procedures. Tain evidence, huh? Socialists, miscreant, hypocrites that they are, will sooner make misguided martyrs out of themselves before they would even consider participating fairly and in good faith in any election. One only need to take a look at the first hundred years since it's crawled out of Marxist orifices to make patterns. Agitators, bomb throwers, harassers, vandals, reds and blacks sweeping over the paralyzed nation in a tidal wave, causing the fall of empires and the suffering of millions. In democracies, that wave tends to strike on election day. President Goldwater knows the unions will do their skullduggery leading up to the elections and has strong plans with Director Hoover to nip their rituals before they can unleash October surprises of their own. The Union Recruitment Standards Act. Barry's answer came in the form of one comprehensive bill authored by the Democrats, fast-tracked from one hearing and committee to the next and finally put out on a vote in both houses of Congress. It sells to succinctly summarize its contents, extensive restrictions on how's and what's of the union's recruitment practices. Maybe then its authors hope unions will be compiled or compelled to comp Port themselves the image they promote and show the American people how much spe spectacular they fall practicing what they preach. Naturally, the now named Union Recruitment Standards Act was received just as partisanly as it was written. Democrats bellowed their assent, Republicans muted their approval, over half the MPP screeched their op pro pro uh, opprobrium, and the rest broke ranks and hollowed their commitment to a beloved principle. America fell in line with their congressmen soon after, needless to say, its discourse over the proposed legislation violently reflected the animus that had settled on Congress like amazing vapor since the Second World War. There's nothing else both its supporters and detractors can do. Now the bells entered judgment by Capitol Hill. The A's and nays have been courted, arms twisted, favors owed, and hands shaken. President Goldwater can only sh shuffle in his seat and see these maneuvers waltz a congressional ballot on the session floor, and if, of course, they decide to attend at all. One more moment of truth to agonize over, the, over in his term. A congressional bill will be introduced. We all have two months to gather support for this in Congress. Do we not have enough already? Yeah, I mean, we've... No one cares. We have 74 people voting for us, so we're kind of okay. I'm pretty sure. So I'm not really worried about that at all. Which is good. Which is nice. <coughs> but of course, we'll see what we can do. This is completely unfair. 114. Now, what's 114 going to jump up to? Oh, we can actually do this. Do we? Oh, now we have three pieces of evidence. How do we get three pieces now? Gross dissolution with the center, center, center. Planning with the actor. The media offensive. I don't know if we have to do that one. I'll do this one again. Um, it's just look at that, that's ridiculous. Yeah, this is this is BS. This is complete BS. I, I I'm gonna have to redo this off screen a little bit. So we'll see what happens. Tight new union restrictions. Occupation. If we want to bet that, please go ahead. Public gift registries. This one be a progressive election campaigns. Tight new union requirements. Yeah. Why does one not? One does not end a disease by reintroducing the very risk that birthed it into the corpus. The same can be said of any effort to definitively end the socialist menace. Let foster the schemes which breed socialist thought, and there will be no end in sight for the riots and rebel socialism that inevitably spawns. In any case, President Goldwater already has his hands full dealing with the red dudes who have already organized. Painstakingly, progress has been made to isolate them from their sources of support, and progress easily undone if newer unions were to spring out like a summer pox. He believes that what imposing additional restrictions and establishing new trade unions will further weaken the extent extant unions to a point where they can do away with them in one fell swoop. This is crap. This is... Uh, no, this is too much at one time, man. The AFL-CIO. Taking on these guys? Future union busting decisions will be more effective? Um, after that one, I think we're just going to go beeline through here. I think we'll go with the left side here. We'll go with what we have, because I'm not going to completely destroy them. We'll do that when we purge the leftists. I mean, I really want to do this side, but like... That's why there's the uh, one over here. Riding the party, Chapel Collectivism. Has not completed Focus on the Socialists. Oh! All the following has not completed Focus on Socialists. Back to the Oh, huh. Well, whatever. Ban the AFL and squash the far left. So we should have done the far left earlier, so. 
As far left, we'll do that next time and ban the AFL. I'm not really here to ban them. I'm just here to just squash them. That's all. It's not enough. We go with what we have. Because whenever I play Goldwater again, we'll go with the, probably the right side. Weakening the AFL. Which, of course, we do on a limited case. Um, all proceeding focuses on the chosen path must be completed. Ooh. The AFL-CIO. We're going to go this one next. The AFL-CIO has reigned supreme over the quilt work of American unions ever since their Faustian merger in the mid-50s. And the fire to... Uh, frightable perceptions of our your lay American. This national union controls a nationwide network of bosses, bribes, and vassals from their velvet chairs in Washington, like puppet masters toying with the marionette strings of their servile dolls. This, of course, cannot be any further from the truth. The union today operates as its constituent parts, and have always had since the age of letter and telegram. A cartel of organizations that have been given the country's labor geographical bounds, organizing them into territories for each to rule as they see fit, with the symbol that they present and the cracks they offer unawares. President Goldwater has made it his ambition, or his, his ambition to split this beast into pieces before he... Of course, Lee's office. Yeah, this is crap. Yeah, no, I don't like this one. Eh, well, but whatever. Do that one first anyways, because you can. What happens? It says we're going to do it again anyways. We, we have... How do we have five... This is so random, man. This is so way too random. Why is it five pieces of evidence now? You know, let's try it. Let's sacrifice a piece of evidence. I mean, that is crap. Like, why don't we get told of the evidence? Why? That's not very good design, man, I'll be honest. We'll do this one, and we're going to just go all the way down if we possibly can. At least three. Do we need more down here, too? The Labor Union Standards Act. After months of draft, draft drawing and consult, consultations with business leaders and key political figures, President Goldwater and his allies have finally introduced their first piece of anti-union legislation in Congress since his controversial war on unionism addressed. Dub the Labor Union Standards Bill aims to introduce new requirements in order for a trade union to organize with the federal government's blessing and operate within its jurisdiction. These include a clean record sheet for the past 25 years, limits on the revenue they report to the IRS, non-affiliation with socialist parties active in the U.S. and others. Senators from the NPP decry the President's latest initiative calling it a gross infringement on the American workers' rights to organize. This sentiment has been echoed by the AFL-CIO, who have been called for nationwide strikes and protests against the bill's passage in Congress. The town will tell their effort will be will bear fruit against the President's own efforts. One more blow against unionism. And we'll end with this general, the Attorney General's report. The Attorney General of the U.S. is the greatest legal consultant 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 in the of the federal government has in its arsenal the president may represent the american people but his constituent constitutionally mandated lawyer represents america as a whole in the courtyards or in courtrooms both foreign and domestic his words carry the weight of the bicentennial superpower and the targets of his ire become unwilling volunteers for demonstrations of its sheer resources and patience which is why enlisting his help is crucial for the task at hand by preparing a scathing report against the afl cio packed with all the dirt the fbi can get its hands on president goldwater will have all the excuse he needs to file a ruinous lawsuit against america's most malignant union Oh, we have war against them. We can lose more political power. Full scale sold against the union. The strength of the AFL will determine how successful this is. Um, hold on. Before we do that, because I do want to do that. How do we get rid of the? How, how do we? How do we get rid of the influence of, the, of these guys? Is it just this stuff? It's got to be this stuff, right? Is that the center? Right? Right? I don't know. Well, I guess. I also check it off uh, off screen. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what we're gonna really do and with the unions. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.